Hey everybody, welcome back. Last talk before dinner. You've all made small things, and I think probably a bunch of you have gotten your PCB board, your PCBs manufactured when you want to make them really small, and you've probably, you know, hot air reflowed them or whatever. But what if you wanted to make absolutely tiny circuits by hand? This is going to be a talk on half size hacking by Alan Morris, so please welcome him to the stage. Thank you. Um, now for a change of pace before dinner, uh, I think I'll probably set, I'll set the record for the fewest number of words in a PowerPoint. Uh, there's not going to be much technical talk in it. Um, so my name's Alan Morris and I'm an AliExpressaholic. Uh, my aim is to get you making miniature marvels without the need for PCBs using 0.05 inch matrix boards despite or maybe because of the difficulty. Here's a project I'll talk about. It's the world's smallest, or so I claim, um, multi-channel voltmeter. Um, it plugs straight into uh, a, a breadboard. Um, when I, uh, I was determined, it, there's, a, there's an OLED on the front. You can see it there. Um, when, I, when I found some 0.42 inch OLEDs on AliExpress, <clears throat> I was determined to uh, then make uh, a board with the same form factor uh, as that. And I discovered these 0.02 inch, 0.05 inch matrix boards about two years ago. Um, oh yeah, so it's obviously there will be a video, but that's set at the front. <laughs> Um, so I actually bought this uh, 1910 Ericsson Magneto telephone in the wonderful Mauer Park flea market last time I was in Berlin for only 10 euros. That's the best bit. Um, and we can laugh at how large those phones were now, but look at the progress in 115 years. Who am I? Well, I wasn't born in a tin. I recently came across this uh, when I was tidying up, um, which I made, it's a, vo it's a transistor tester I made when I was 16. And of course, using very board, 0.1 inch matrix board. Um, so it's only taken me uh, 50 years to achieve a four times increase in density. Not far behind Moore's law, I think. Um, I bought my first computer when I was at University at Cambridge, this Acorn Atom. It wasn't, honestly, a very good computer, but the basic did have a 6502 assembler built into it, and that was fantastic. Um, when I left university, I love home computers, so I, w I worked, there was a, a lot of home computer companies in Cambridge, um, and I worked for two of them. Um, you've probably not heard of either. Uh, this is a new brain which is aimed at business, but then th this complete clunker, the computer's links. Um, both companies went bust in a few months, not because of me. I did buy uh, ZX81 uh, a bit later, 40 years later. I don't know how many of you have ever seen one of these. Um, probably the smallest home computer. It's the um, TCV of home computers. It's rock bottom, but an absolutely brilliant minimal design with lots of compromises to make it, in those days, a four chip computer was a, quite a thing. I've had a few articles on Hacker Day. Um, that was the first one. This, these are two um, voltmeters. I, they actually, I actually wanted these. So this is a, a four-channel wireless voltmeter. So you could actually either have a little, well, it's actually bigger than the display, which is quite ironic, um, uh, 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 a normal multi-multi input like that, 
Also, I, I, am, I embedded um, a transmitter into an OBD2 shell to plug into a car so I could manage my, monitor my car battery voltages. And this was during uh, COVID, so our car batteries were going flat through lack of use. Uh. Oh, yes. So when I discovered these um, 0.05 inch matrix boards, I became obsessed as to how small, how minimal I could, I could make everything. Um. Oh, I didn't talk about this. Sorry. This is, um, yeah, this is the first thing I did with, a pop, with this, the, these half pitch matrix boards. And it's got an uh, AT Tiny 402. Um, it's actually too small to be useful, but when did that ever stop us making anything? Oh, yes, so, so you can actually see the four-channel voltmeter. I don't know if I need to click again. Will it play? No? Why won't it play? Uh -huh. I don't know. That's a bit of a shame. <laughs> um, it's an embedded YouTube video. Well, you're not going to see that then. Um, you'll have to come up and look later on. I did claim it was the world's smallest, and I got this snarky comment on Hacker Day saying, no, it isn't, but it's likely the worst. Um, but I replied, it's not the worst, because I only made the worst, which is this one, using these three-digit uh, uh, voltmeter units um, with a voltage multiplier and blah, blah, blah. And I thought that was great when I made that to plug into a breadboard as well. Um, my fascination with, with miniaturization and really pushing things to a minimalist level started when I saw this sort of thing, which is a Sinclair um, miniature radio. This is the second one he, he made. Now, Clive Sinclair wrote all his own copy. So, small radio, big lies. So, lie, misleading. It's only got three transistors. It does some feedback, and it does have five stages of amplification, but somehow they became six. And that, fantastic range and power. What does, it, what does fantastic power even mean? It's driving a, a crystal earpiece. How much power do you want? And I'm sure it didn't have fantastic range. It was a terrible radio. But people, you know, got, a lot of people got into electronics from building projects like that. So, you now have a choice. Do you want to stay with the blue pill? And I don't mean the STM boards. Or enter the 0.05 inch matrix with the red pill. Oh, don't enter this matrix. That's a nightclub. I came across this leaflet last night. Opens at 10. Right. So the cons, right? <laughs> it's, it's very, this can be extremely annoying. You get all the problems of hand soldering, PCBs, but worse. Um, passives go flying. I must, have, I must have about 50 resistors and capacitors embedded in my office carpet. Um, it'll hurt your eyes, and it's awful to make changes. So be sure to uh, breadboard. No, no, hang on. I've got a. I've got a, yeah, you'll need excellent eyesight, you need excellent vision to do this kind of work. So I've devised a test for you. Can you see that? You don't see that? Yeah, okay, you pass the eye test. So what do you need? Um, so this is a 0.05 inch matrix board. You can buy half size, connect, half pitch connectors. Though you can, you can also fit these turn pin, 
connected, which is really nice because they, they push easily into a breadboard um, rather than having to lean all your body weight on it, like when you're trying to get a, a, an Arduino Nano into a breadboard. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so half, half thickness solder, um, and you can get some uh, normal um, female headers in. I tried before I came around. As well as, oh, as, well as uh, all these being half size, some might say you need a half size brain as well to be attempting this kind of thing, which drives you nuts. And what do you need? So, mostly the usual things for surface mount work temperature controlled iron. Um, this is a very wire pen, I'll tell you about that in a minute. And a binocular mouse grip. These are surprisingly cheap, but you can get a, this is a Besser, but they're, they're only 35 pounds. Uh, 41 euros on eBay, so I, th I thoroughly recommend that. I use it when I can't see why a solder joint isn't, isn't making it or there's a short. Um, I usually use um, half moon reading glasses over my own glasses, which I've got here, because I can, I've got a very strong uh, astigmatism, so I can't take my normal glasses. Um, so I can see through the bottom, but still see normally over the top. Whoa. Right. Oh, where's the clicker? Here it is. You'll also need a little hacksaw, which you've probably got in your home medical kit. Now. What we really need for this is an extra arm or two. And Leonardo was ahead of the game here as usual. Now, the service, as I mentioned this, I mentioned it out of order, um, how annoying it is to remove a component. I've actually had to scrap some attempts because it's totally messed up the board or damaged the IC to change uh, even the resistor. Uh, so, um, do test your circuits on a breadboard first. Oh, LEDs are particularly tricky because they tend to, if you solder them for more than a few seconds, they just die. So what components do you use? Um, point, I use point, uh, sorry, 0802 passives. I've tried smaller, but they're just too fiddly. I mean, these are hard enough. It's harder than doing it on a, a PCB because the pads aren't designed. They're not the same shape as the, as the uh, component pads. Um, for connections, I use VeriWire, which is this insulated wire here, uh, or just um, some ordinary wire. These are cut-off uh, connector pins. Now, VeriWire, a VeriWire wire, it's called, it's called a, a wiring pencil wire. Right, so for the surface mount components, I set my iron to three, up to 320, but unfortunately that's not enough to m melt the insulation on the Vero wire. So what I do is I crimp it and, and often tin it first. So it's an extra stage, but at least the solder will flow. But aren't normal modules a problem with their giant thick pins. Well, no, they're not, because what you do is you remove that if it's already soldered on. That's a pain. It's better if, if they come without a header soldered in and replace it with uh, a 0.05 inch header with every other pin removed. I've raced through my talk, haven't I? Now, who's interested in trying um, 0.05-inch matrix boards? Anybody? A few people. Well, I've got um, 10 kits here w with the components I showed. I was going to charge two euros, but I'd, uh, I didn't want to look like a dick, so they're free. Because <laughs> so many people are just giving out free uh, uh, little boards here. Um, thank you for listening. Two minutes early. Good.